Welcome back, everyone, to Heroes of Bastion, episode four. Hope you're having a lovely day, and I'm so sorry. Um... <laughs> Our story one level below Excellus. It's antithesis, really, in Bastion. It's the layer of neon. And this layer was created to be a source of entertainment, a source of relaxation for the, the citizens of Bastion. It has casinos and theaters and all sorts of different forms of entertainment. Its streets, opposed to Excellus's clean white marble, are this slick shiny black obsidian. The buildings are these geometric shapes of metal and glass pulsing with arcane light. It's constantly in twilight. It's never fully dark, but it's never fully light. But everyone in Bastion truly knows what happens on Neon. It's where people go to find releases for things that may not be dinner table conversation. Drug trafficking, weapon trafficking, all manner of sin on Neon. And we find ourselves in a singular alley. And there's a man in a now torn up and roughed up suit running down the alley. His face is a bit bloody, a bit bruised, and he seems to be running for his life while three metal men, gentlemen in masks are chasing him, shouting after him. <gasps> Rally, I need you to roll me a d6, please. I'm sorry, oh. what? Oh, did roll nobody else see this coming? I thought oh, that's why we were laughing. laughing. I thought we were laughing because of the sex jokes. Yeah, but I thought that it just extended because we all knew Rally was the one running. Oh, no. That makes the sense <gasps> better. Rally ro rolled a one. So as this man, he trips and falls. And this old man turns around as these three men come up to him and surround him. And they're like, all right, hand over your wallet, kid. And you, we slowly see above them, there's a shadow just above them on the roof above. And we see these long tendrils slowly and quietly grabbing along the walls and climbing down, slowly lowering this form behind these three men. And then we pan just a little bit back from the alley and as we hear screaming as things are being slammed around, bodies are being flung. And we see the old man scrambling to the end of the alley. And just as he reaches the end, he falls and is sucked back into the alley. We're gonna cut, we're gonna cut back to the Everbright household. Oh shit, nah, son. So where we left the three of you, Rally had left and the three of you have kind of been there for a while while Gilly prepares the car uh, as he had to pull another one out of storage because the first one was destroyed in the attack. Where do the three of you intend on going after this? Gilly seems to have plans for uh, Lilac and Alea, um, unless Alea would like to go home. And Nathira, what are you doing? Nathira probably wouldn't be planning on, because it's still nighttime and she mm -hmm. told her dad that she would be out all night so not wanting to worry him she's probably just gonna stay in the hospital or like in the hospital unit bed all night unless something else takes her out uh alea are you gonna go with gilly or are you gonna go back to your house where is gilly exactly going so you two would know alea and lilac would know that um, or at least have like a, maybe like a, a whisper of an understanding that Nova as a hero, um, had safe houses around a bastion. Mm. And since your home is currently, uh, in pieces at the moment, um, he intends on taking 
uh, at least lilac to one of the uh, one of the safe houses in the meantime. And anybody who wants to come is free to come. Um, hey, Gilly. Uh, yes. Uh, do you think we could take mom too? I will attempt to convince her. Um, but I, I, I intended talk to on... her if that's easier. Uh, you yes, I mean I will I will give her a call. Or, uh, um, well, how about this? This might go over easier and keep me out of um, uh, punching range. Um, I will drop you off at your home, and then if you decide, uh, if you and your mother decide you want to come, then I will come back and pick you up. Okay. Hmm. Um. Just a heads up for everybody. Uh, we should really not forget that the person who did smash through, uh, Rend, if that's who they are, uh, they've seen our faces. So they know who we are outside of our suits. Okay? So, Mithira, um, I would look at maybe uh, sorting out some kind of thing with your parents, maybe. Well, Nathira, you are welcome to come with us and you'd be, we have a medical right, suite there as well. Yeah, like that's what I meant. I mean, like sort out something with your parents so that way you don't go home. Um, I, um, I, 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 I think I should stay here in case Raleigh comes back because he won't know where we're at. But I can I can call my my dad. I will text Rally and let him know where we go. If you like, we just don't want to leave you alone. But what if somebody else has Rally's phone? Because then you'd be telling them the, the the safe house place. So I think maybe that's not really good. I can I can stay here. I was able to disappear before. I can do it. No, no, but, it's but really someone, good idea someone needs to be using someone your powers like that. Yeah. Well, someone needs to be here in case Rally gets back, because you know Rally always comes back. So, like, someone um, needs to be here. Nathira, mm. there is um, there is someone at the safe house that will um, make sure Rally comes back. And they they'll need to hear it from you. So, I, I just come with me, and if you don't want uh, to stay, I can take you wherever you need to go. Okay, perfect. You you promise? Sorry. Like, if I want to leave, I can leave. Of course. Lilac narrows her eyes at I that. was about to say, she looks Lilac you up can, and down you can the pierce, side You can of her pierce eye. the mask if you want. Unfortunately, the theory is not the most uh, perceiving person. She just blindly trusts, and if <laughs> you and prove her wrong, then she pr you prove her wrong. Um, uh, um, okay, but uh, how, do, how do I tell my dad, Gilly? I will take care of that. You know where we live? Yes. Oh, everything will make sense when we get to the safe house. Okay, now you're being even more cryptic than I'm used to. Just, we are still in a very um, dangerous place, so I suggest mm -hmm. we get in the car and we will uh, make our way. I will drop Alea off at her house and mm -hmm. give me a call uh, if you need anything, uh, if you need to be picked up or if you decide to stay, and um, then we will go from there. Alright. Sounds like a plan. Uh, and another another limo, even though the first <laughs> one got wrecked, uh, rolls up. Um, this I'm being conspicuous here. Somehow nicer uh, than the one before. Um, and I'll have no uh, idea who we are. <laughs> and uh, Gilly opens opens the door for uh, all of you to get in. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. Gilly. Thank Adira you. puts her seatbelt on and just sits right there in the middle. And the car takes off down the street. Um, you guys should be wearing your seatbelts. You're right. Save your purse. So I like. It did it. No, like not, not, not behind the back. Like you need it over your chest. Fine. There you go. Okay. Thanks. That's into my shoulder. And we, we, the car goes just a couple streets over and pulls up in front of Alea's house, where your mother is already out front. 
about to witness another death. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and Gilly steps out, and he like looks like he's gonna say something to your mother, but thinks better of it, um, <laughs> and then goes and opens up the door for you, Leia. Hi, Mama. Inside. And you head inside uh, with your mom. <laughs> and we're, we're going to come back to Aaliyah. Uh, as, as, the, as the car... Like war flashbacks. <laughs> Just that inside. <laughs> uh, the, the car pulls away and it begins to go down several layers. And several layers. And then Gilly stops uh, in a lot, essentially just outside Gentown. And Gilly steps out of the car. And he goes, it's best if we uh, go the rest of the way on foot. Um, the limo is a bit obvious. Okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, you been to, begin to make your way through Gentown. Uh, and uh, Nathira, yeah. you, you begin to recognize this part of town oh. as it's your neighborhood. Oh, this is fun. This is... Lilac, this is, and she's like trying to grab at Lilac's, um, like her little perverse sleeve. Lilac, look, that's where, that's where I skinned my knee over there, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. when I was seven. And mm -hmm. that, that fence over there, oh my um, God, that's rally. Come on my shoe. That, oh, yeah. Ra yeah. Oh. The kids do that here. Um, but if you look over there at that fence, a rally, the uh. rally ruined that fence once his dog like <laughs> ran into the front. But it's, I'm I confused. Never I thought we were going to someplace secret. This isn't very Yeah, secret. I'm confused too. What is this? And by the time you end the reach the, the, the end of that conversation, you are in front of the rally point. Uh... Um, and you see uh, Gilly presses like the doorbell. And then he presses it in a basically like a rhythmic combination. And the door opens. And from the office, we see Jonathan Wheeler Rally's father step out, Hi. and and he sees he like looks at Nathira and he looks at Gilly and he looks at Lilac, and he's like, "Well, um, I suppose you're here for this for the safe house, yeah?" And um, Gilly goes, uh, "Yes, I I will explain everything." And he are we and, going back to the secret hideout that me and Rally made? And we got, uh, we got like forts. Uh, Jonathan Wheeler just kind of looks at you and goes, in a way. And he escorts you all uh, basically to the back of the game shop, where he then essentially moves one piece on a game board. And there's this kind of like chukunk sound as the floor begins to lower and you go beneath the rally point. Um, uh -oh. seeming... uh -huh. I don't really that, but... <laughs> You'll be all right. Um, in, basically, you are in between the layers now as you come down to this almost like bat cave uh, like operation underneath uh, underneath the rally point. We see along the wall, there's all these different suits. We see Nova's first suit. We see the one of the Rook's first suits. We see different weapons that each of the heroes used. We see a crafting bench. We see all sorts of different like forges and tools and all sorts of things. We see, you know, an arrangement of crystals and all sorts of different things. And we see some bunks and we see this seems to have been a workshop of some sort that has been now retrofitted into a safe house. And as you reach the bottom, you see the floor that was, you know, what you were standing on. A separate floor slides above you to then seal the ceiling above you. And um, Gilly kind of steps, uh, steps up to Jonathan and goes, let's have a quick chat. And the two of them uh, step away. Um, and now Nithira and Lilac, you are in the rally point, or now your safe house. So, Rally lives here. And you guys had no idea this was here. I'm starting to think. And she like looks down, she's playing with the little friendship bracelet that like she didn't really have matching ones of that she had taken off her backpack she was looking. Um, I think she just stuffs it in her bag. I think Rally maybe kept more secrets than I thought. Um, well, well, that happens. People keep things to themselves that they don't want other people to know. 
But like, I mean, people seem really honest with you. If they really did, then why didn't you tell anyone about your condition? I didn't know about it. You didn't know that you had an accident? No, I knew I had an accident, but then a couple of years ago I had surgery. And if you look, look, you can see. And she pulls like her braids, one of her braids kind of to the side and she points and you can see just this massive scar. It's one of the reasons why she keeps the braids there. And they, they fixed it. So I don't really, I don't, I don't know what condition they're talking about because the surgery fixed it. I mean, Nathera, nothing is ever really fixed like that. You're still going to be healing like there's even a scar is never truly healed but you know that I was right better. they yeah, said i was fine didn't... they said no more they said no more bleeding they brought out the paperwork and said look and then they showed me lots of pictures on black and gray uh, on the top of lights and um, they called them x-rays and they said there's no more bleeding look boom 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 and then my dad gave me the thumbs up and i said okay dad right did my dad lie to me? And Jonathan steps in and he goes, neither Rally nor your dad uh, lied to you. Um, Rally has no idea. And Gilly steps up and goes, may I introduce you to the Smith? Um, uh, the Smith took care of all of the armor and the weapons for all of the, the heroes during the Golden Age. Um, huh. And, um, and Rally Jack has no idea? <clears throat> Uh, no, uh, if, if he knew this was here, he would be in my stuff all the time. Um, so I, uh, yeah. and it's better to, to keep it, keep it to myself until he was ready. Uh, how is Rally involved in this? Um. Where is he? No clue. Left in a huff, transformed. Um. Transformed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has this thing where he can create different forms with his belt. I've only seen like two of them. One of them's big, one of them's small and flies. Fascinating. Uh, and where did you get these powers? These uh, devices? This guy named Sterling at school. He uh, brought us all in for like an after school thing. He said it was a big secret and that we weren't supposed to tell anyone. Yeah, but I feel like these are the people that we should tell considering the guy didn't give us any training whatsoever. And I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to give the whole story. There right. was a fifth egg. Sorry, you, 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 you have better <laughs> public speaking. My life, I'm sorry. No, it's good. I didn't mention the egg. So there, in this box, Nathera didn't notice that while there were four eggs for each of us, there was also an indent that implied that there was a fifth, and these eggs transformed into these pieces of jewelry. She's going to point to her earrings. Um, piece of jewelry. Uh, Starling mentioned that only he can remove them, um, which kind of seems like a double-edged sword. Uh, so yeah, that's where we're kind of at. He kind of left as soon as we were attacked by a student. Oh my god. A student attacked you? A student that was transformed. He's inside Alea. Well, kind of not inside her, He's... but like in... Uh, I... Alea has this thing. Alea has this like, this black hole kind of thing. And she kind of... And he went straight in. And then she teleported me at one point and I heard him. He's still inside her. He's going to die in there. Okay. Um, I will give a call to... Uh to uh Alea's mom and um just see see what we can uh get figured out um but the the rest of you i'm i'm gonna see if i can find rally um i've got a friend who's still active and see if he can keep his eyes out for him um if he's flying around or transformed it's somebody's gonna see something uh but for now just rest yeah um do I have service on my crystal? Uh, who do you need to text? Nathera's not asking, Kristen's asking. Oh, do you have service? Uh, maybe, it's real weak. It's like bouncing between no bars and one bar. She's gonna try to off to the side message rally. 
location, question, question, underneath your basement. Dot, 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 dot. We need you help. Okay. Um, we're going to flash back up to Excellus uh, to she wouldn't know. Alea's, she wouldn't Alea's, know. Alea's house. Um, so your mother is rather quiet when you walk in. Um, and just kind of takes a seat at the at the dining room table and just kind of gestures to one of the chairs for you. So, um, you want to fill me in on what's been happening? Okay, so somebody came up to us and we got all these weird powers and there was like these egg things and mine became an ear cuff, which I really like by the way, look, but, and then Lilacs became earrings and then Rally, who haven't met Rally yet, but he's the person with the um, superhero, the super duper club. He's pretty cool. And his friend, Nathira, well, they also got something and basically we all got these weird little eggs and I didn't really know what was going on, but all of a sudden I sucked a child into me. Oh, and then uh, Dad's house got attacked. Okay. All right. Um, let's start with the... You have powers now? I guess. Okay. Who knows? Well, we were supposed to keep it a secret, but now I feel like... <laughs> Um, but I know that the, the student who we fought and Lilac knows and Ethera knows and Rally knows and Gilly knows, and I don't know if dad knows. No, he's, he, I haven't heard from him. We, he was supposed to come here. We were supposed to talk and he never came. Why was he supposed to come here? <clears throat> Uh, it was about that picture you sent. You said that that was nothing. Why would Dad come here to talk about it? Uh, our life together was quite private. And the fact that someone was sending it uh, means privacy has been violated. So it was important for us to talk. I try and pierce the mask. <laughs> yeah, please go right ahead. <laughs> Roll well. Amazing. Roll well. Um, oh. what do I add to pierce the mask? Pierce the mask yeah, is plus mundane. Mundane. Um, <laughs> I got a six. Six. So mark mark potential. Um, it, so. But with a six, you're just on the edge of like you you know you can get a feeling that something is off, but you're like, but what I don't really understand like what would be really you don't have you don't have context to kind of figure out what it is. Mom. Yeah. Is everything okay? You know you can tell me, right? Yes. Yes, I know. And, um, you know, just concerned at where your father went and who got access to our personal files, um, because regardless of how strong your father is, it's still dangerous for you and me and you have powers now. So, I mean, that's great, but it's, you know, there's a certain level of safety that we need to maintain. And, um, yeah. Now, uh, about the kid you ate or consumed or I, did, I mean i didn't like it didn't like make me less hungry so i don't think it was eating that's that's good i suppose um do you it was a student or what was it um well they were about to hurt lilac and i didn't i mean it was a student but i guess it turned into something and all i saw was that they were about to hurt lilac Are the rest kind of just happened. I don't think so. <laughs> you don't think so? 
Lilac said they heard them when they were moving through me? Something else? Something I made. Okay. A baby? My baby? Okay. Um, I don't know how else things get made. <laughs> oh boy. Um, having the superpower and the birds and the bees talk is not uh, was not on my bingo card for tonight. Um, <laughs> so, can you release him? Um, I I mean I could try. I don't. Maybe I need, like, Pepto-Bismol. Okay. Um, because I already got a report of a missing student uh, who didn't come home after oh, school. No. Um, okay. So... Well, they're not missing anymore. Uh, right side. <laughs> yeah, he's just inside my daughter. Um, and... Oh, God. Um, so, uh, here's, here's what we're going to do. We are not going to tell anyone anything until we can figure out how to get him out of you. Um, um, you were here all night. I will vouch for that. You went over to the Everbright household and then you came home. All right, is that understood? And the powers, we are gonna have to, uh, to talk about it. We'll have to um, get Gilly involved. Um, he helped your father uh, with his uh, when he was young, so he, is more well versed in this than I, you know. I, you know, I, I wasn't in like, the business like your father was. Yeah, I mean, do you have any history of powers or anything? Is this like genetic or something? I mean, I guess it could your, come from dad. Lila it, got it. I mean, it most likely came from your father. I, I, I'm a school principal, so I, nothing powerful about me except for being able to give detention. I mean, your power suits are pretty cool. They are. They are. Um, okay. I, uh, I'll probably have more questions, but I just need a little bit of time to think, if that's all right. Uh, also, that, that boy, um, Jackson, I believe is his name, he dropped off those things for you, and I, I left them uh, upstairs. Yeah, yeah, thank you for telling me that. <clears throat> It, it, are you two a, no, a thing? My no, my name is Bye. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you just go upstairs? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm dipping out of there so fast. <laughs> okay. So as, as you go upstairs, you begin to hear just very softly, Hello? 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 Can anyone hear me? I can hear you. Hello? Hello? Oh, as if. Where? Let me out! And it, it just, like, continues. Oh my god. It just continues. <laughs> I feel like I should burp. <laughs> I don't do you know do? if to laugh or scream. I don't know what's going on. It's so <laughs> horrifying. Like, Someone's son is inside me. <laughs> we know not who. <laughs> Damn. Right. It's high school all over again, guys. <laughs> uh, so, what do you do before you go to bed? <laughs> Alea. Um, I'm gonna take some pep this <laughs> Okay. Like, try and, like, I don't know, like, do that thing where you just hold your head, like, your hair up and your head over the toilet and just kind of wait, even if you're not feeling it yet. <laughs> yeah, you, you sit there for a while and nothing, nothing comes up. Nothing? Nothing comes up. I'm, I'm sorry. Guessing Hello? you're in my stomach. I'm Hello? sorry. Can you hear me? He just continues to scream. Well, this isn't going to be great for my night's sleep. Okay. <laughs> and you go to sleep or you take Amid, your Pepto Bismol and try to sleep? I, yeah, I take my Pepto Bismol and try to sleep. Okay. Um, well, this, I, hopefully, I'm not haunted by the screams of this person I ate. <laughs> Um, so we're gonna pan back to neon, to the neon layer. Rally, roll me a d6. Come on, buddy. No, I'm killing you more people. A six? Yay! <laughs> there we go. So, you remember being in the park. You remember, you know, screaming and transforming, and then 
the next thing you feel and remember is a fist connecting with your face, sending you rocketing down an alley. As your vision is finally clearing and you see there's a man in a finely dressed white suit. He's got blue hair and glasses and a cigarette hanging out of his mouth as he's fixing the brass knuckles on his wrists. And you would know this as the hero Rook. Um, and goes, all right, kid, enough is enough, all right? Let's just talk, all right? And like you feel, you feel everything now. Like this guy has probably beaten the piss out of you for the last like 15 minutes. Um, and there are a pile of bodies behind him. There are three uh, bodies like kind of all piled together near the wall and one near the end of the alley. And he goes, I need you to calm down, kid. And Rally, you are back in control. Rally looks at the pile of bodies and this hero that he's like such a big fan of. And he just says, what, what did you do? Uh, kid, sorry to tell you, but, um, when I uh, came down this alley, I found you, well, beating those three, one, these three half to death in that one. Well, I had to pry you off of him to stop you from killing him. I don't know if you're a new kid in town, a new hero or something, but you obviously don't have control, dude. And this isn't the way we do business here. Uh, I'm Chris knows that this is the truth, but Rally is going to try to pierce the veil and see if he actually like, believes yeah. that he did this. Yeah, roll 2d6, uh, plus one day. Uh, 10. 10? 10. 10. Okay. So, uh, you da, 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 you get to ask uh, three questions. So, um, you know, there's what are you really planning? What do you want me to do? What do you intend to do? How could I get your character to? How could I gain influence over you? Or you, as we've done so far through the game, you can warp the questions to fit your needs at the moment. Sorry, how many questions do I get? One more three. three. Three questions. Uh, I got who are you? Um, how can I get you to stop hating me? <laughs> I, I mean, he he's he's standing like you know eight feet from you. After this last punch sent you kind of reeling, he's kind of standing back. Um, he's not attacking you anymore. He's trying to get you to talk. Um, I mean, I don't think Rally has many questions outside of that. He just wanted to see if he was telling the truth. He's telling the truth that you were the one who did this to these guys. Rally is somewhere between numb and heartbroken as he just says, I, I, I couldn't have, I'm, I'm a hero. I, I, I'm sure, kiddo. Uh, what was the last thing you remember before? Cause this is the before before this moment right now. You were just grunting and growling and screaming. So uh, this is the first words I've heard you speak. So uh, what uh, what was the last thing you remember? I was running, mad transformed in the park where are we oh we're on neon kid how far is that from the park uh you are i believe it's five levels up right now oh jesus you're one two three four levels up you are four levels up uh all right so you're new to this aren't you yeah yeah uh, when did you get your powers A few days ago, I think. A day ago? Two days ago? It's all kind of blurring together. How hard did you hit me? Uh, you know what? I'm a professional and you had me on the ropes, kids. So I'll be honest, I was trying to knock you out with that last one. Um, so, uh, okay. All right. So this is probably very shocking for you. And I understand. Um, but it's also unfortunately normal for heroes like us getting powers. Our emotions kind of get ahead of us and then things happen, all right? Uh, but, and I'm personally, I'm not the one, which out of like, out of scene, Rook is the one who's known for being brutal with taking down criminals. Like he is, he is typically like the one to leave them with fractured ribs and broken arms and stuff like that. Like he's, he's not the best one to talk about on this subject, but 
and he's like um what the what triggered it what got you angry what got you mad i i i don't know he's gonna pierce the mask Oh, me am I? Uh, so I'm gonna try to lie to this professional hero real quick. Said, yeah, a professional hero whose whole thing is analyzing and like. Oh shit! Thing. Um, so he can see ten seconds into the future. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See that I regretted my decision ten seconds yes. from now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he goes, "All right, uh, why don't we start with the truth? Um, who's Nathira?" Because as he saw 10, year, 10 seconds into the future, um, who's Nadira? Uh, someone I don't want to lose. Uh, is there a chance you're going to lose him? I think so. Why? kind of like looks at the dead bodies and back at the so belt they're, they're not they're not dead oh, they're not they're, dead they're, 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 okay they're great dead. they're they're just like like breathing very shallowly they've they've are crumpled you beat the ever-living tar out of them sick looks at the hero and just i think because of me uh you afraid that you're going to turn into this and hurt them and that's how you'll lose them no. Can is there like a reflective surface somewhere that Rally can like see? Oh yeah, there's. Let's just get it. Let's get like out a window. With, let's get artsy with this. There's a there's a pool of like water. Uh, there's a puddle on the ground that you can look into. Rally just wants to see what he looks like. Uh, why don't you describe uh what this form looks like for us? Should I tell everybody what the form name is, or do we do you keep just want that? The keep that. Just right. the physical description. Interesting. Uh, you see an amorphous shadow encased in this really old-looking armor. The body itself kind of burns with this really deep, like purple, almost like galaxies exploding and then reforming. But the brunt of it is this just dark and starless night and the armor bits are weathered and worn and you can see that same energy kind of crawling along every plate these sort of like layered metal scales that are tied with really um like thick rope uh you can see it's sort of tied to the front and all along the waist and the mask itself is in the visage of an oni. You can see this sort of Japanese demon with the elongated tusk. And just... For this, like, vague moment of clarity, I guess, for Rally in this form, the eyes have, are not glowing. They're not... They're just his. Mm -hmm. But there's that very deep flicker of red every time he falters just a tiny bit maybe loses control for like a millisecond mm -hmm. oh oh that's so good so you're afraid you're gonna lose control and hurt your friend and that's how you lose them i think they're gonna try to follow me towards whatever the end of this is and it'll cost them their life did they make the choice that they want to do that? I guess, but... And Kate, there's, no, there's nothing you can do about it. But be there for them. Kind of looks at the bodies. Because sort of... you, you think they'd be happy with this? Or would they be happy with you there with them no matter what? I don't really know anymore, but I think I might have been wrong. There is something I can do. 
and kind of looks at the bodies. Kid I can make sure that there's a world where she doesn't have to use her powers. All right, kid. Oh no! <laughs> Wait a minute. Here's here's the deal. Here's the deal. Your friend. Would she be proud of you for this? You care about what she thinks of you, right? I think she'd be pretty damn scared of you right now. At least she would be alive to fear me. That is the sappiest bullshit I have ever heard. And he, like, flicks his cigarette out of his mouth. He's like, I understand the pity party. I get it. This is a stressful time in your life. Hormones, all of that. But there's one thing that heroes don't do, if you're going to be one. We don't give up. All right? No matter what. No matter if it seems hopeless that she may follow you and die. Who knows? But at least you tried and you were there. Not going off on a murderous tirade because that's so much better than being there and dealing with it. Because goddamn, she's going to need you if that's the case. What kind of friend are you just to walk away and go beat up some people instead of being there for your friend? It's part of growing up, kid. All right? Doug genuinely doesn't have an answer for that. He's just eyes locked on the body still. What's your name? Your real name? It's a secret. <sighs> and so he, he walks up to you. Puts a hand back and up. <laughs> he ain't letting him fucking touch him. <laughs> he just keeps walking up. Just tell me your name. That's all I need to know. so tempted to give a fake name <laughs> but I know he can see into the future so you just Allie Wheeler oh you're the Smiths kid oh that I'm sorry, makes the, sense the what I saw you got the fancy belt with the powers and everything did you did your dad make this for you my dad owns a comic book shop oh my god yeah oh fuck Oh, you, oh, ah, shit, he's gonna beat my ass. You uh, can see 10 seconds into the future, but you didn't see that bitch. That up. You still <laughs> fucked that up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh, because oh. it's just, li just like that, so Raven, you can see into the future, but it's still inevitable. Um, <laughs> um, and he's like, ah, well, um, that's a conversation for you and your father. Uh, but yeah, your dad, uh, your dad's a little bit more than a comic book store owner there, but, uh, and I know, I know the Smith and if he knew his son was going around doing this, dude, I know he raised you better. I know he raised you better. That you can think through your problems. You don't need to punch through them. And he taught you to be there for your friends and those you love. Yeah, Riley just kind of stands there. He's he's not really sure what to do. I'll take I'll take you home, kid. Come on. He kind of backs up and just, I. Kid, I, you, you're giving me a very difficult position right now. All right. I can't let you run rampant through the city and keep sending people to the hospital. I'm going to take you to your dad. He's going to help you figure out the belt. Might get your ass whooped by your father. I don't know. But I can't let you run rampant anymore. I don't, I don't want to go with you. I just, I need to 
I need to make a call. Okay, I'm not leaving. I'm going to stand right here. <laughs> I could plug my ears if you want, but I'm not going nowhere. I ain't letting you run around this city beating up more people. Do they look like they deserved it? <laughs> I mean, they were they were like they were they were mugging the guy. But the innocent guy that you hurt did not deserve oh. it. <laughs> the I innocent about that guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Three of them may have deserved it, in quotations, um, but the the innocent dude who was getting mugged, who you hurt, did not. It's okay. Let Rook do it the hard way, please. We're all anxious to see. Riley just, like, backs up, tries to go somewhere he can't see, and is actually <laughs> going to make a call. He's going to stay, like, like just keeping his eyes on you sees 10 seconds time. ahead yeah. like he knows where you're going <laughs> all right yeah you can see 10 seconds of the future and i am making the call yeah all right make your phone call i'm gonna call nathera is my crystal like charged or like do, does that have bars in this layer of the city so do you do you d like d no. transform okay no. can, can you reach can you reach your phone <laughs> Through the Do I have pockets? Does this form have pockets? This form, I don't know if it has pockets because it's just kind of undulating darkness. Um, I like pat myself down, just like uh, huh. do, do you do you need to use my crystal? I could use your crystal, yes. All right, all right. I'm you, gonna you, scream. There you go, kid. And he lights up another cigarette. He's like, "Do you? Sm no, you don't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is it is yes. it good? I <laughs> no, no, you don't. No, I again." I'm frightened of your father. Uh, so, no, absolutely not. So since uh, Rally is a, a, a teen with, a, with, a, with basically a smartphone, uh, I'm going to roll to see who I actually call because I don't think he remembers the number properly. That tracks. So I'm going to roll a d4, and it'll, it'll be our, our cast of characters, and a four will just, you can choose who I call. Got it. Oh shit! I'm just, oh. Got it. Oh shit! Fuck. What was it? I call lilac. So lilac, you are in the cave. Um, you know, sitting next to Nathira, um, mm -hmm. talking, and your crystal buzz buzzes. Oh my god! She's gonna. <laughs> look down at it and just answer and raise it to her and be like hi you've reached lilac ever bright spawn how can i help i don't think rally even comprehends that he called lilac and he's just like okay so i'm like somewhere in the middle of nowhere i don't know where i am right now i i, I, live there, I just i one more time where am i you're in Neon, kid. You you're neon. on you're on Fifth Street. I told you I would drive you home. Wait, oh, hey, you remember is, that one place where I got like the special edition comic books? Then I Rally, realized Rally, that they weren't Rally. actually. Shut up! Shut up! Oh, it's you. Yeah, it's me. You called me. Okay, so you're in Neon. What are you doing in Neon? Do you have any idea of the sort of credibility that place has? Well, yeah, like I said, I ordered some special edition comics books from here, and then I ended up just getting mugged, but, like... Oh, my God. On the offset, it Why? wasn't... So, right, you're on Fifth Street? Who are you with? Rook. And do we actually know the names of the other guys? As he's talking to Rook. No, I, I don't know the names. And I then, like, a couple and... other people. But, uh, but... Oh, my God. Rally, just go home. Nathira there, or? She hangs up. Oh, oh. Well, that, okay. uh, that sounded like a productive phone call. Uh, <laughs> was that Nathira? No, that was... That was, a, that was someone else. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, let's go, kid. Come on. You made your phone call. Time to go. Last go warning. On. We're gonna go take you home. I'm taking you back to your father. 
This is a strong debate of what I wanted. Oh no. <laughs> Don't make me do this, kid. <laughs> so I'm a big fan, but get, before we go, can you sign something? So he, I'm gonna have him roll to see what you want him to see what your your intentions are. He's gonna pierce the mask. That's a twelve, buddy. So, are you planning on attacking him if when he signs something? I don't know, because you said ten seconds into the future. If he's still signing it in ten seconds, he wouldn't see it. Right, right. But he, yeah, no, I was one hundred percent planning on just punching him and leaving. So he doesn't. So you don't know that he knows. Yeah. As he walks up and he goes, sure, kid, uh, what do you need me to sign? And when you go to reach for something, the lights go out. (laughs) As as you went to reach it, he just (laughs) and just like puts you into the ground and throws you up over his shoulder. (laughs) Well, some of these comics are going in the bargain bin when I get back. (laughs) All right, uh, we're going to cut back to uh, the end of the night here with uh, Lilac and Nathira. So, Lilac, you just hung up on Rally. Take it away. <laughs> um, she puts her crystal away, and then she's just going to say to the room, uh, Rally's on his way home. Rook is bringing him, I think. <laughs> And we see, like, Rally's dad be like, Ugh. Oh, great. Okay, well, that's good. It's good that he's coming home. Um, hmm Jonathan? Yes? Um, can I go home just for a little? I, I, I need to tell Burton that I, I'm safe and I don't think I'm getting any service on my crystal, and I really just, I, I, I really would like to see him. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll walk you home. Are you sure you don't want to stick around till no, Rally gets no, here? No, it's okay. Um, I need to, maybe Burn can fix my f- phone. Um, yeah, uh, can I, can I go, can I go home? Uh, and he looks to Gilly, and Gilly goes, I, I will walk you, uh, home. Okay. Thanks. Uh, and, and Gilly gestures for you to join him on the elevator back upstairs. Okay. Um, thanks, guys. I'll, I'll see you later. Not looking at anyone. I feel like she can feel Lilac's, like, glad just piercing her back. <laughs> Do you want to say anything, Lilac, before they leave? No, she's not saying anything. Uh, she's watching herself slightly around Nithira since... She found out what she has about her and such. Uh, so she's being nice by not saying anything at all. Got it. Uh, and so the elevator goes up and you're back in the comic book shop. And as you kind of like connects, uh, Gilly turns to you and Nathira and goes, how are you feeling? Um, I, I, I mean, I got a headache. All right. Um, I, I know you want to go home, and I will take you home. Uh, but tomorrow, if you could swing by the the shop, and I'd like to take another look at um, at what you've got going on, and see if I can prescribe anything or help you in any way. Huh. Um. Do you know anything about the doctor? Who? I mean, she and Burton, they showed me the x-ray stuff and they said everything was fine. So I guess I'm just confused. Well, and he kind of like, he kind of like steps to the side and leans on one of the tables. He goes, it's, it's possible that perhaps the, the doctor maybe didn't do as well of a job as he said he did. And this, um, these new powers of yours, um, they take a toll on the body. They, it, they, our bodies aren't meant for certain levels of power, especially right away, you know. Um, and so it's it's possible it, through the strain of using them, it began to undo the surgery if it wasn't done correctly. Mm. Okay. But it doesn't mean that it's game over. That it's you're going to you're going to get sick or something like that. It, these things can be controlled. 
you can be taught how to use them in a healthy manner. Okay. Cool. And you can you can be Scream. You know, that's that's the name, right? The hero? Yeah. If you want to be, of course. Yeah. I have I I have things and I ended up a butler, so you could be a butler if you wanted to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Cool. Thanks, Gilly. Um, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. All right. And uh, you walk uh, to the front of the store. You open the door, and rounding the corner uh, on a motorcycle, uh, we see Rook um, and a a passed out uh, rally over the back of the motorcycle. Um, Have I and, detransformed, or am I still in my thing? Uh, you detransformed after okay. he knocked you the hell out. Um, and uh, this guy steps off, and he goes, "Ah." Um, Evening, everybody. How's it, how how we doing? Uh, this uh, this kid, uh, he uh, uh, well, he was. Uh, I got to bring him home. Uh, so, uh, and you see, Rally is like he's picking up Rally and like firemen carrying, throwing him over his shoulder. Are you are you right, Nathira? Yeah, he's he's gonna be okay, right? Oh uh, yeah, just uh, I just had to knock him out. He was getting a little little randy, okay. uh, so I just had to cool. give him a little one two. Cool. Um, kicked my butt for a little bit, you know. Uh, wait, did you say your name's Nathira? Yeah. Uh, he can't. He's, he'd probably freak out again if I told you, but he's uh, he's real concerned about you. Uh, and I don't know if he's going to tell you, uh, because he's a teenager boy, he's a teenage boy. Uh, so he doesn't really know how to process his emotions at the moment in time. Um, it's, it's fine. He might've gotten confused. I think he, I think he was looking for Lilac. She's no. downstairs. No, he said he called the wrong person. Um, yeah. uh, he had to use my phone. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, totally, totally. Hey, kiddo, he cares mm -hmm. about you. All right. Uh, and he's just scared to lose his friend. So, uh, I'll, 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 uh, I'll make sure that his dad smacks some sense into him and sends him by in the morning. All right. Totally. All right. And Gilly's like, all right, well, um, here we go. And he walks you, uh, back home. Uh, is there anything specific you want to do when you get home? Um, is my dad there or is it quiet? He's asleep on the couch. It looks like he was he was just staying up late and you can see his crystal is like in his hand and he's just like knocked out there's like a half eaten sandwich it's got crumbs on his chest and he's just knocked she's out she's gonna of the couch. grab she's gonna grab one of the blankets on the side of the couch and like put it over him and take one like the little last flower that's left in her other braid and put it on his phone be like pat, pat, like pat his head Lock the front door and then go upstairs. As she's going upstairs, she's just going to text. Um, she's going to ring, like text his crystal on hers and be like, just letting you know, I'm, I'm actually home safe. I'll see you in the morning. Love you. XXXXX. And he has like an automated text message that like after 11 p.m. It's like, hi, hey, it's Burton. I'm most likely sleeping. <laughs> I will get back to you in the morning. XOXO. XO, 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 XO. <laughs> Nathira sent this message. Um, <laughs> He's just so going to go upstairs to sleep. I'm going to go to sleep. Okay. Um, nope, that's it for right now. Okay. All right. And we're going to cut uh, all the way back. Well, no, you're just, hey, Wait one second. I got to go, go back to the rally point for a moment. So we're at the rally point. And the elevator comes down as we see Rook uh, Lilac walk in and kind of just drape um, a passed out um, <laughs> rally onto the bed. And he's like, uh, hey, uh, Smith, I found your kid up in Neon. Uh, he was he was beating some people up pretty bad. Uh, I don't know where he, I don't know if he, you gave him this belt that he's wearing, but... Um, uh, well, I tried to talk to him, but he's in a pretty dark place, and I, I don't do well with kids, so. Uh, 
I'm going to go. As you like, see, Jonathan's just mean mugging him. Smith is just mean mugging him as Rook just kind of like lights up another cigarette and leaves. Uh, wait a minute. Did uh, you yeah. say he was beating someone up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There was these three muggers and then there was just the muggy, I suppose. Um, and he had tentacles coming off of him and he was slamming people in the walls uh, pretty sure uh, most of the, some of those guys won't be able to walk for the rest of their lives. You know, we, 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 we've all been there. We You go a little too far. Yeah. And again, Jonathan just glares at him and he's like, but that is not what you should be doing. Absolutely not. Huh. Did you clock him? I did. I, I did. I, I'm sorry, Jonathan. He was, uh, he's going to make a break for it. And he was all spooky and tentacly still, so... I just figured it would be best to hacha. Yeah, real good brain hero work. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and he just kind of like makes it ick. No, is that you? <laughs> and like walks away. She like sneers back. <laughs> <laughs> um, as your father, like Nova and Rook never really got mm. along at all. No, I'm gathering. Yeah. Uh, and he heads out. And so it's you, Jonathan, in a passed out rally now. Mm. Is there anything you want to do? I think she'll probably like go over to him and just like check his back for like any tentacles for a second and be like, no, okay, he's fully out for the count. And then she'll kind of turn to look at Jonathan and be like, so what's the password for the computers? You want to get on the computer? I want to look around at the stuff you've got. Look, go ahead, look around. That's fine. I'm not going to keep anything from you. This is what I was keeping. So, I well, I'm still in the Brooklyn accent. Hold on. <laughs> uh, go ahead and look around. Uh, I'm not really keeping anything. So, go for I'm it. I'm not thinking that you're keeping anything. I just want to see what you've got. Sure. Go ahead. Cool. Okay. And what are you going to look at first? Protected. Um, um, you're just going to go on the computer. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it has it, it has plans for uh, armor for the different heroes for weapons. It has like reports from different villains. It has like just random stuff on it. So what are you looking for in particular? Surveillance footage from different levels. Roll me two d six. Come on, baby. Oh shit, Lilac Smart. Oh shit. That's too bad she rolled two ones, say. Eh? <laughs> so you sat down at this computer with the confidence that you carry yourself through most things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then you see like a, a complicated computer system in front of you. Gilly usually does this for me. Do you, do you need help finding something? Yes. Do you have any surveillance footage from different levels? Yeah. Yeah, we have access to basically every uh, crystal cam and bastion. Almost. Perfect. Everyone. Um, I want to see what happened to Nova and the Rend-like villain that broke into my house uh, and where they are now. Right. Sure. Um, and he like, he like kind of goes to your house and we see outside your street, we see your, your dad like walking out and we see Rend landing in front of him or this Rend like figure landing in front of him and sending him rocketing through the house. We see like all of the different times that people exploded out of the building. Uh, and then we see them jump away and your dad pursuing. And we see them kind of battling their way up Bastion. And then he gets to basically like, where they go out of sight and he goes uh looks like they went up and he checks like the flight like the flight dock the sky dock and he's like they're not up here and they're not on excelish um looks like they went to the restricted section and i don't i don't have access to that all right we'll keep cams on the area nova should be back by then um how long has he been gone now? It's been a couple hours. Okay. Mm. All right. I'll keep uh, I'll keep cameras trained on it. 
Um, is there any way to keep that footage for ourselves and delete it from every other server? I just don't want anyone to see four undocumented heroes bust out of my house. And he goes, easy. And then just does a couple taps. And you see, like, the footage of the fight is now replaced with just kind of like somebody walking their dog along the street. The house looks fine on the cameras. Um, and, like, basically everywhere else it has been remedied. You are really good at this. Thanks. That's, um, uh, I was their guy in the chair. So I, mm. you know, I did, I did this for many, many years. Uh, I get the feeling you're going to be getting back in the chair soon enough. Thanks. Uh, and then she's going to go and sit, I think maybe on one of the bunk beds and just get out her phone. And she's starting to put like little tweets out uh basically about her house and stuff and be like hey like we're all fine here like the Everbrights are doing good um and blah 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 and start like faking public tweets that nothing bad has happened and that Nova is taking care of the issue uh already and they're just gonna have to wait some renovation and that she's always wanted a bigger more open space bedroom <laughs> okay all right so you're doing damage control and then are you going to bed uh, and then she'll probably, uh, I think <laughs> she's like, this is where I'm sleeping on a bunk bed. And she'll kind of, I think she'll like put like her coat on top of like on top of it. So she's not actually touching the covers and then she'll just sleep on top of it. You're just like your dad. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I love my dad so much. Um... I love your dad too, actually. <laughs> mad, mad dude. A few hours pass in rally. Your head aches as you wake up. Oh and God, am I going to be beaten up today? And your, your dad's sitting in front of you and he slides like two basically pills and some water. And he goes, well, um, depending on your answers, maybe another. Uh, how you feeling, kid? And you now see this bat cave like location. You see these different glass cases with all of these different versions of different heroes' armor. You see a wall covered in weapons. You see forges and workbenches. You see vehicles maybe in shadow off on the distance. Um, you see like computers. You see kind of this like resting area where you are and Lilac is passed out uh, as well as Gilly uh, is also passed out nearby um, after he dropped um, the hero off. Rally's like kind of excited, but also can't bring himself to be happy right now as he just We had all this space and I have to share a room with four other people. Listen th I don't have a good excuse. Um the whole thing was to keep a low profile, right? Uh, like so yes, we have all of this space, but technically we're not supposed to have this space. It's, it's a whole thing. Uh, are you okay, kid? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Pops, how are you? You know I can tell when you're lying, right? The rook Just brought takes you in the here pill, after... says nothing. Um, and he, he... He looks over at you and he goes, Mathira's really worried about you, man. Worried about her? Have you told her that? She, she probably knows, right? And he comes up and just kind of bonks you on the head. And he goes, no, you got you to say it. You got to tell them. Must ride on the rook, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> like you gotta, you gotta tell her, because right now I think she's pretty scared, and uh, you're her best friend. She needs you. I don't. I don't think anybody needs me. He raises his hand again. Hold on, give me a second. <laughs> I mean, you already know. But... 
we have we have powers now and when I went to go speak about the club I messed up in front of everyone and then later on we got these powers and there was a monster and I had no idea and then later on when we went to kind of like motions vaguely over at lilac just kind of like eh, over the eh, his house the another one burst through the door and i couldn't do anything i transformed and then i ended up injuring two of my teammates or friends i not any good to anyone what happened in issue number one in Nova when he got his powers? Remember when he accidentally broke the door to his house? He punched that criminal too hard. He caused a car accident. Kiddo, you just got these powers. Of course you're not going to be perfect at it right away. Failure is the best teacher there is. So what did you but, learn from today? Learn what getting shot feels like. We're going to circle back to that. Um, <laughs> but uh, kind of looks around. Oh, she's not here. I, I know I'm not expected to be perfect, but... I thought I'd at least be good at it. I'm, I'm, I'm the the superhero kid, the the guy who I I've, I've been working on it. I didn't know this place was here, but I've been working on it all my life in the hopes that maybe someday I could do something that 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 mattered. And if I if I can't do this, then I have nothing. You're going to give up after one day. Your dream. She said this is your dream, right? Be a hero. You finally have the opportunity. You're going to walk away after one day, one day of mistakes. What kind of hero is that? Is that what you want to be? I don't know. It's better than Guacamole and the hero who only got one comic. Yeah. Do you want to be... Do you want to be guacamole and get one oh, issue and end, end like 30 pages in? I think people give that comic a bad rap. I think if they had just given it some time, maybe a little more character development, maybe we would have gotten a bit more out of him. But So let's get some more out of you. Let's get some more character development. Okay? Train with Gilly. I'll help you understand your weapons, your belts and everything like that. And let's figure this out together. And God damn it, go see Nathira and tell her how you feel tomorrow. Okay. I love you, kid. And I'm terrified, but I'm proud of you. This is scary. I love you too, Dad. And he kisses, he like pulls you in, kisses you on the forehead and goes, no. <laughs> oh yeah, that probably hurts. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, now go to, go to sleep. All right. If it's all the same to you, I, can I look around the, what is this place called? Is this like the, the, the rally cave? It's the, it's the rally point. It's, we're still it, the rally point. This it's is still part the of the, point. yeah, that's hide in plain sight. Yeah, we need to have a talk about that. Yeah, dude, go, go ahead. <laughs> you can look around freely. He's gonna look at all the comic books and memorabilia, and he finds a lot of all the comics that are that pertain to this situation, and specifically looks for ones where there is like an admission of feeling between the character and someone else. Just just getting inspiration. <laughs> So you you find you find the comic where uh, Nova or you know his his real name being um, Lioness 
uh, um, admitted his feelings uh, to Diavola. Um, you find that, like, that comic written out. Um, yeah. Man, and I thought this was the worst print out of the bunch, but, like, I guess it has some value to some people. All right. So anything else you want to do before you go to bed? Hmm. I think I'm going to wait for my dad to sleep, and then I'm going to go on the computer. Okay. Yeah, your dad passes out at a, a workbench working on something. I want to look at the surveillance footage. Is it the same password as the computers upstairs? It's 100% the same password. One, 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 one. <laughs> I love Nova 1994-00X. Uh, I'm going to look for surveillance footage of what I did. Yeah. Okay. So you see the park and you see you transform and you see this kind of this dark tendril like form essentially and you just kind of take off and you have to trace yourself all the way up through to neon and you see yourself stalking along the rooftops you know looking at people staring at things and then you see the scene of you um setting upon the muggers and it's hard to watch, honestly. Like Rook described it quite aptly. Um, these these people didn't stand a chance. You surprised them, you know, you very silently climbing down and then just ripped them to shreds, beat them up, threw them around. Um, and really you didn't touch them with your hands or your feet. It was like these tendrils that extended from you that took care of most of it. And then you see Rook arriving and checking the pulse of like one of the guys. Uh, and then the two of you just begin to go at it. Um, and to the point where you get to the moment where you came back to consciousness. I... Yeah, Riley's gonna delete the footage. Okay. You delete the footage. Anything else for you? No, we're just going to go back to bed. Go back to or bed. To bed. To bed. All right. So night comes and you're all sleeping. Uh, Alea, while you're sleeping, you begin to dream. And you open your eyes and you're in this kind of just black void you see little dots of light kind of almost like you're surrounded by stars on all sides like almost 360 and you just begin to hear a faint voice off in the distance saying your name You're muted. I can't. Oh, or, or oh, no, wait. no, no, you're not muted. I, you, I just couldn't, I didn't get the first bit. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I it was just like, I guess I swim towards the oh, voice. I don't know how I'm moving. Uh, you just, you're just basically, it's like, it's like you're walking on top of the sky. You know what I mean? It's like, oh. it looks like an abyss below you and an abyss above you and to your right and to your left, but you're just seem to be walking on some form of solid surface. Hello? And I'll keep moving forward towards the voice. And it just keeps calling, Alea. Alea. Yeah, that's me. What's, what's up? And Can you I see, you? <laughs> you see kind of out of the inky void rises that boy. And he's just kind of in the fetal position on the ground, just kind of rocking back and forth. Are you okay? And he just, he's just rocking. Are you, I'll like try and touch him and like. When you touch him, he just kind of like, ah. like skitters back <laughs> and just like, he looks terrified. Oh. His skin, his skin is like almost like paper, paper, like white, like very, very pale. He's got these very like deep, dark circles under his, like under his eyes. But you also notice like he's almost got these like 
inky black veins kind of crawling up his face. Oh, this isn't good. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm here to help you. Are you, did you get sucked in? Are you, what's your name? Y- you, you took me. My name is B- B- Ben. Hi, Ben. I'm Alea. I didn't mean to. Sorry about that. Um, Let me out. Can I go home? I'm I'm gonna try. I'm trying to. I don't really know how to do it yet, but I I promise you, it's gonna happen, and I'll let you out. I'm gonna die in here, aren't I? No, no, I won't let you die in here. You're I. I don't. They keep telling me that I'm gonna I'm gonna die in here. Who keeps telling you that? And when he says that, you see there is about ten robed figures standing around you. What the fuck? in these like solid black robes and they each have these golden masks uh, on their faces that are all indicative of different animals. So you see an owl, you see a wolf, you see a dragon, you see many different ones standing around you. Do I and see a do- fox? You do see a fox. Okay. And he, you see <laughs> he, he just points at them I don't know who you guys are, but he is not going to die in here. You're, you're going to be okay. It is the will that he stays. Whose will? And they begin to say, they just begin to like march forward closer and closer to you. Uh, I want to try and like grab him and pull him back and get in front of him. I'm taking this man with me. You're taking the man with you? Okay. Taking so, this man with me. I will fire man. <laughs> okay, so you, you grab him and he's like squirming as you grab him. And I as, got you, I got you. And you, you just begin to run into the darkness? Uh, yeah, I'm going to run the fuck away from them. And okay. I'm carrying, I'm assuming she's pretty strong. So In, it, This is your dream. So yeah. you, you okay. pick him up effortlessly. Um, okay. So you just begin to run, and you begin yeah. to run. It's going to be okay, Ben. I promise. <laughs> and he stops responding. Oh, he, he stops moving. Uh, if, I, if I'm, like, grabbing his wrist or something, can I feel if he has a pulse? It's very, very, very weak. Fuck. Okay. Um, Alea, by this point, is... She's still in her dream, yes. But yes. by this point, she's starting to freak out. And she doesn't know what to do. And she doesn't know... She doesn't have anyone that she can go to right now. Uh, that she can get help with this. So, <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work in the dream. But I think she begins to feel uh, loneliness. And as you're, Give me more control. <laughs> as you're running with this kid and his pulse is weak and you're beginning to feel lonely. Please don't leave. Please don't leave me. Please stay. Stay, stay, stay. Okay? Stay with me. And as you're saying, please don't leave. Please don't leave. He's no longer on your shoulders. And you're, you kind of like glance at your hands and your arms and your hands are much smaller. You're in a dress that you wore when you were a kid. And you're, you see, you're holding onto the hand of another little girl and you're saying please don't leave please don't leave and you see this girl has like like messy like almost like dirty red hair um and she turns around and she goes well they said i have to leave now they said i'm too scary to be around you so i gotta go no, no, please stay, stay. Who are you? I don't remember. I don't remember. That's okay. You'll remember soon enough. And then no. we can be together all the time, just like it was. Who are you? Can you tell me your name? I'm your sister. Lilac? You don't look like Lilac. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's me. It's Avon. I don't remember you. Am I supposed That's to okay. remember you? No, our mean parents took their took your memories away. 
Mom did? Yeah. They, they didn't want you remembering me. Why didn't they? What did you do? They were just scared of me. Do you remember Lilac? Yeah, she was always mean to us. And you begin, you begin to have these like memories slip back of like the two of you, like you and this little girl, like you were almost inseparable. And it always made Lilac kind of angry. You know, and the two of you had, the three of you would hang out all the time together, but like you and Avon were attached at the hip. But then you remember, you remember Avon would get into these tantrums and things would get broken. And there was this one time that one of the help got hurt severely by one of her tantrums. How and much does she look like me? She looks like now that you're looking at her face, you see the similarities between her and your mother. Okay. Why are you in here? It's the only way I could talk to you right now. Do you know where Ben is? Oh, I think he's gone. But that's, that's okay. You know, it's- No, no, he's supposed to be, I promised that I'd make him get out okay. Well, we'll you, we can find him together. And we can figure this out together. Okay. 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 And she extends and, her hand to you. Yeah, I'll go and take her hand. And the camera begins to pull back. Oh, God. <laughs> As we see Rally and Lilac passed out in the cave uh, in the rally point, we see Nathira sleeping in her bed, Burton on the couch with crumbs all over him. Um, and we see Alea, you begin to, like, we see you twitching in your sleep just a little bit. As we also see the window crack ever so slightly and begin to slide up. And that is where we're going to stop for tonight. I got goosebumps no! all of my legs! Oh, all of so my legs! Like, <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us for episode four of Heroes of Bastion. I've been your game master, Alec the Bard. Thank you so much to Nathira, played by D&D Imposter. Thank you so much, Rally, played by Hamasamakun. Thank you so much, Alea, played by Caminator, the animator. And thank you so much, Lilac, played by Relentless. We will see y'all next time.